If you're a designer rather than a typographer, creating beautiful looking lettering can be very difficult and seem very daunting, but there's some tools and techniques that you can use in Illustrator that can make the whole process so much easier, but still give you an amazing end result. <laughs> So first of all, we have some text. If I select it, you can see I'm using the font Baskerville. And first of all, we need to create outlines. This will turn this into a series of shapes. And then we're just gonna ungroup everything. So we've got all of these letters as individual shapes. Next, what we're gonna do, grab the direct selection tool with A on the keyboard, select the top part of the T, and then just drag up holding shift to make this a bit taller. Now we need to get rid of these parts of the T. I forget what they're called. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna get rid of them. Now there's a few different ways that you can do this next bit. You can do it with the pen tool and we've covered how to use that in a previous video, but we're gonna use the pencil tool. So let's go and grab that here. Now, before you just get carried away and start drawing like this, oh, what we need to do is double click the pencil tool make sure you drag the slider for smoothness all the way to the right, especially if you're using a mouse or a trackpad. Honestly, it's just gonna make life so much easier. And then we can start drawing. And you can see whatever I draw is going to be lovely and smooth. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start by drawing a swirl. So we'll go for something like this. And you can see that's not particularly well drawn. I am using a mouse, but still, it's not very well drawn until I let go. And you can see it's, uh, well, pretty good on the left, but the right definitely needs some work. So we can actually redraw over this path and have another go at it. Let's do that again. Come on, Dan, you can do better than that. There we go, much better. Now, it's not particularly smooth here. So what we can do is go ahead and grab the smooth tool, and we can just click and drag over individual areas to smooth them out. Or what you can do is if you select the shape and then use the smooth tool on the whole shape, you can smooth everything. Now we don't wanna to go too far because we end up with that, which is clearly awful, but this can be a way to just smooth everything out. And then we're gonna go and thicken up that stroke weight and try and match the thickest part of the other letters. Now that does look pretty good. It's a little bit close to the other letters there. So I am gonna nudge this up ever so slightly and then just bring the top of the T up as well. And the pencil tool just enables you to freestyle a bit more and try out different lines and curves and just see what works. Now at the moment you can see that this swirly line does not match the style of the other letters. We've got some thicker parts and we have some thinner parts. So what we're gonna do now is select this. And first of all, we're gonna change the stroke type to round cap. Now this is quite important and I'll show you why in a moment. Next, we're gonna grab the width tool. That's this one hiding under here. Shift W is the shortcut. And this part here, this is a good width. It matches everything else. But as we get round here, we need to adjust the width. So we can kind of thin this down here and you can see it does adjust the whole stroke. So what we're gonna do first of all, is just grab, I think this point and we'll just define the width there, exactly the same as it is. So when we go and adjust the width here and thin this down, you can see it's gonna stop there, respect that width, and it's not gonna apply it to the whole stroke. However, there's another way that we can do this. And if we grab here, click and drag and make it thinner, you can see because we rounded off the cap, it actually turns this into a little bit of a drop on the end there. So if I go and change the cap type back to square, you get that. As soon as we round it off, we get this. Now, if you want to adjust the size of the drop, we can again use the width tool, kind of fine tune this. And the reason this technique is great is because all of this is still an editable stroke. So if we go in and we want to adjust the stroke weight, you can see as we change it, the drop size changes with it. Now at the moment, the drop is a little bit close to the rest of the swell. So what I'm gonna do is press N for the pencil tool, and just redraw this. Maybe we'll stop a bit shorter. And you can see it does change the drop quite considerably. So we'll just give this a few goes. Try and get something looking right. That's a bit better. But then of course I will need to go and adjust the size of the drop. So we'll just bring that down. And then I could even try and use the smooth tool to just go over that. 
just make a few minor changes. And there we go, that looks pretty good and it was very easy to do. So let's go and do the same for the other side. And if I want to, I can actually even move this over. I could even scale this up just to make sure that it covers a little bit more of the composition as a whole. And we could bring the T up. There we go. Maybe even bring the T a little bit closer to the other letters. And because all of this is still an editable stroke, what I can do is use the pencil tool now and I can actually have another go at reshaping this. So I want this to be a bit more circular. And that's a pretty good job. And then we can just use the smooth tool to smooth out all of these kinks. And lastly, what I'm gonna do, press P for the pencil tool. He meant to say pen tool, but he's an idiot. Click and drag holding shift to create a vertical line. We'll set the color to white and we'll chunk up the stroke weight. And then I can change the stroke width profile to this option here. And you can see it tapers this off at either end, give this a slightly different style, the kind of thing that you'll see on a lot of lettering. And then what we could even do is add one to this line here. Now, rather than just kind of drawing that completely freely, what I'm gonna do is select the path, press Command or Control C to copy, Command or Control F to paste in place. I'm gonna move this up here, out of the way. And then I'm actually gonna press C for the scissors tool and I'm gonna make some cuts. So I'm gonna make one there and I'm gonna make one there. And then use the direct selection tool to just trim off all of these other end anchor points. Now it's gone a little bit weird as you can see. However, what I'm gonna do is if I move this back into position, holding shift and using the down arrow key, press I for the eyedropper tool, I'm then gonna click on one of the other white lines and it will sample those same properties. Now, if it doesn't sample the width profile, what you can do is just go and reapply this one here so it tapers off correctly at either end. And if this does carry on like a little bit too long, we can use the scissors tool to just trim it short again and then delete the excess with the direct selection tool. And then if I just make a few more refinements here, And of course, we're gonna to have to pop this in the center. And if you spend a bit longer on it, you can get something that looks like this. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, I've got my full Illustrator Masterclass linked below that dives into typography, logo design, all that stuff in a lot more detail. But otherwise, I will see you in the next one.